Are you a church or another faith-based nonprofit organization looking for ways to make money to put back into your community and into your organization? Well, keep on watching because I'm going to give you 10 ways and then I'm going to bring you a bonus one as you stay until the end and watch. Keep watching. <laughs> Thanks for joining me at the Financial Spotlight. I'm Chantrell and I'm here to give you financial tips and tricks that are going to help you on your road to know your money. And today I am talking about something that has been near and dear to my heart for many, many years, and that is fundraising. I have fundraised for every organization, sports teams, churches, schools, all of these nonprofit organizations always need a little extra money to put back into the community and to help their people. So I love fundraising for those type of organizations. But today we're gonna to be talking about a special organization and that is a faith-based organization. It could be a church, it could be a youth group, anything like that. If you are in the faith-based organization, you already know that it is very difficult to get people to fund your organization because companies are really leery when they're giving money to company or organizations that support religion. Therefore, we have to find different innovative ways to raise the money for our organization. So today I'm going to give you 10 different ways and then I'm going to throw a bonus one in at the very end. Please stay to the end so that you can get that information because this one is going to be one that you won't even have to do much work to be able to make that money for your organization. Okay. All right. So the first one we're going to start off with is a no brainer, which is your local restaurants. So there's various restaurants that are willing to have a fundraiser or have an event at their location and then give back to your organization. There is Buffalo Wild Wings, there's Panda Express, there's uh, Subway, there used to be Baskin Robbins, I think they're still doing it. And then the one that I really love the most is Applebee's. Why? Because Applebee's will actually give a pancake fundraiser. And what they'll do is they'll have you come to their location, they'll have you sell these, well, it's called Flapjack, so they'll have you sell these pancake breakfasts to your people that are going to support your organization. And then they give you back a portion of what you raise. So every pancake deal or uh, sorry, meal that you sell, they want $6 on it. If you sell them for $10, you've made a $4 profit and you haven't really done anything except for sold tickets and you have to get volunteers from your organization to come into the restaurant and help serve and host and all of that. However, they're giving you the location, they're giving you the pancake breakfast, and they're giving you the tables and all the setups and all the fixing and everything that you need. And they'll even supply flyers for your organization. You just need to tap into them. I will put the link below so that you can go ahead and read more about that Applebee's Flapjack fundraiser. Our second one is one that I used to do regularly, which is a concert. So with this concert, you would have it at your organization. You would contact the local um, music people that are into doing religious or Christian based or whatever music, and you would contact them and let them know, hey, we're doing a concert. We're trying to raise funds for our church. Would you be willing to come and sing or do a selection or two? Or would you be willing to come and uh, render, do, play your music or your praise dancing or whatever it is that you guys do? Would you be able to do that? And a lot of pay people will agree and say most definitely. The best way to do this though I have found is to reach out to choirs in your area or within the, uh, the county that you live in and see if they're willing to bring their choir and some of their church members to your concert. And then when you have the concert, you go ahead and take up a donation. And when you take up that donation, that is funds that is going to your church. Number three is a 50 50 raffle. So we all know what that is, right? If not, let me explain it. People will get buy a ticket. The ticket might cost $10. 
once you get however many people you're going to get to purchase tickets for $10 and say the pot is $1,000, the winner will get 50% of that pot. So you have basically just sold tickets to people, sold them for $10 each, made $1,000, give the winner or choose a winner from those tickets that winner will receive $500 and then your church keeps $500. It's a win-win situation because basically you're not even doing a lot of work. You're just making tickets and then making sure that you sell them, right? Okay, so let's go on to number four. Number four is going to take some sweat equity and that is having a car wash. A car wash, get your children involved, get the teens involved and start uh, selling car wash tickets or or sell car wash tickets ahead of time for like ten dollars fifteen dollars however much you want to sell them for and then the people show up with their tickets to get their car wash their car is washed and they're happy and the church has raised money from just having the children or the teenagers out there washing cars okay so let's go on to number five and that is a seasonal festival so when i say seasonal festival that means if it's spring if it's summer if it's fall you don't really want to do a winter fest. well you can do a winter fest because you can do it inside so you can do any season and the festival during that time and what you would do is you would have people bring food so that they can sell it you would have people bring different prizes maybe you have games you can call your local radio station and have them come out to the festival and put it on their radio station like a street team would do. And then you can also have different flyers go around the neighborhood, have the kids come out. Like this past holiday, Easter, would have been the best time to do that because you can do something called, like I call Easter in the park. You can have people come out, you can have people donate food, you can donate eggs, you could have had people come out and do Easter egg hunts. And while they're there, maybe they would put money into a donation or maybe you pay, charge uh, for them to come tickets or maybe they pay to be a part of like a potato sack race or whatever so that you can raise money for your church. Okay, let's go on to number six. Number six is more like a flea market type of sales type thing. So you can contact all of the church members and say, hey, do you have anything that you are willing to give away or you don't want anymore you want to sell at our flea market have it at or rummage sale have it at the church have put flyers out locally and then have people come around and purchase items these items can be for a dollar five dollars ten dollars you know anything that you are willing to sell these people can come and purchase them and then that money can go to the church number seven is similar to this one but this is called um funds funds to orgs.com so funds to orgs Dot com and I'll put the link in the description box. They what they do is they collect shoes. So basically, you would contact all of the members in your congregation or your organization, and you would say, "Hey, we need you to donate your shoes. We need you to donate, uh, you know, different types of shoes." And then once they and these have to be gently used shoes or brand new shoes. And once you they donate them, then you would contact for funds to orgs.com. They would come and pick up the shoes and you would set up all of the things, the bags and all of the things that you need in order to do the fundraiser. And then they will uh, right, weigh out the shoes and then they will give you your organization money based on the poundage that they receive from you. And then these shoes are donated to other countries and, and other places where people are in need of shoes in those in those places. So it's a win-win also for your organization because it's like you're giving back to your community and getting money for your organization. Number eight is something where you might have to get like a designer in your church or someone, maybe a child, a teenager draws or something like that, and then start putting logos and things on t-shirts and hats and mugs and then put them up on places like Shopify or up on Etsy or on Teespring and sell them 
for a profit for your organization. Once you sell that, you guys will make money from these sales. You can market it however you want to market it and make sure everyone is supporting your church. Number nine is going to be a bowl -a thon If you guys have a bowl, -a, bowling, a bowl, -a, a bowling alley or something in your area, you would take up funds from people that they know and they would pay a certain amount per pin that the person knocks down in the bowl -a thon And then once you raise all of the money at the end of the day, then you'll see maybe you'll have a winner, you have a trophy or something like that for the winner of the bowl -a thon And then you have raised money and the person feels good because they got a trophy. And then number 10 is going to be like a mesh up of a few things. So when you are trying to raise money, you want to make sure you're doing things that are slightly easy. So you can do something like a Super Bowl party or a crab feed or um, a coffee party. These are things that you can do at your church where you're drawing people in, maybe you charge an entry, charge a fee. Of course, for the crab feed, you're gonna charge for the tickets. You're for the coffee uh, fundraiser, you're gonna charge for coffee. For the Super Bowl party, you're gonna charge ticket for entry, and then you'll have your big screen TV, you're showing the Super Bowl. People are all together gathered and having fun together and socializing at the church. So that way you'll bring money into the church, into your organization, and it everyone will have socialized and gotten to know each other. And so it's a win-win again for your organization. Now this special last one, this is the 11th one. And I said, I wanted you to stay to the end so that you can get it so that you'll see this one is a bonus. Okay. This one is super easy and it's basically just a social media type thing. So a lot of churches and faith-based organizations have websites, they have Facebook, they have Instagram, they have YouTube, they have Pinterest, they have all these different social media sites. So what I want you guys to do is to start leveraging that. And what I mean by that is getting yourself a GoFundMe where people can donate to your church. You can do um, something that's similar to GoFundMe, which is called Give Lifey. So G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. I'm going to put that in the description box below. Um, there's Spot Fund. There's a Patreon that you can get for your church. And then one that I love is called um, a call coffee so you can buy me a coffee and with that this is where you can just support uh, have people support your church by putting money into these accounts donating through these accounts it doesn't even just have to be your parishioners or your congregation or your church members or whatever organization you're in. It doesn't have to just be those members it can be whoever and because it's on social media they can do it anonymously without anybody knowing. And But if they don't want it to be anon anonymous and they want to get like a form at the end of the year that shows that they donated to a 501c3, then you can always make sure that you get their information and then you can send them a receipt for their donation at the end of the year. But that one right there, guys, that's the easiest way to get some money for your church. Putting up a link and having people go to the link and donate? Come on. We gotta leverage our ability to get money easily and that is social media. So I hope that this information has helped you and that your organization is going to use all of these fundraising ideas. If you have any questions or you have any more fundraising ideas, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. I love to read all of the comments and I do respond immediately and make sure to share this with anybody that you know does fundraising, has a church, has a faith-based organization, has some place that they go to where they're trying to raise funds for their nonprofit organization. Again, I will put the link to all of the places that I mentioned in this video in the description box so that you can go on over there and start raising funds for your church. Have a good one. Bye.